and positivity to come with the announcement of a new manager. It is all perfectly set up in the Hamden sunshine on the south side of Glasgow for a right to contest the Scottish Gas Scottish Cup final on May the 25th. It's the first semi-final to be followed by Hartem and Lothian and Rangers tomorrow afternoon. It's knocked away by Angus McDonald, Link Clarkson, looking early to try and get Boyan Miowski in behind that Celtic rear guard. He, of course, had the significant moment in the League Cup semi-final against Hibernian. Scoring the winner. No way past Greg Taylor on this occasion. Alistair Johnson set out to Nicholas Kuhn. He gets the starting berth on the right-hand side. Kuhn Jung Yang on the left for Celtic and Kyogo Kurashi through the middle and he drops short to pick up. Rio Hitati looks to play the one-two with his fellow countrymen but it comes all the way through to Kelly Roos. Well, it's a noisy Hamden Park, Michael Stewart, as we would expect. And what an afternoon at stake. Absolutely, wonderful setting. The weather's decided to, to turn and give us a little bit of sunshine as well, which just adds to what could be a wonderful day for either one of these teams here. But, um, obviously talking about the game, the pre-match there, and, and everything that is writing on this for, for Aberdeen in, the, in regards to the, uh, the disappointment of the campaign. They've made the announcement, the new manager's coming in, they know what's happening, there's a wee bit more certainty. Here's Bojan Miowski, perfectly slipped in by Clarkson, and Bojan Miowski does it again at Hampton Park! It is the dream start for the Dons, two minutes in! Miowski sends the 8,000 Aberdeen fans delirious! They believed, Peter Lehman believed, and Bojan Miowski delivers on the big stage again! Well, what a dream start for the 8,000 Aberdeen fans, and that man, Bojan Majowski. It's a great goal, it really is. Too much space in that, in between the defence and the midfield there. Lovely ball from Clarkson. I tell you, Joe Hart does ever so well to get out so quickly, but just not enough. And Majowski, when he's in that position, we said it before the game, even though he might not be in the best run of form, you still never doubt that man. He gets into the position, he shows the composure. He's got Joe Hart flinging himself right in front of him, and he still finds the back of the net. Game on. Well, it was one goal in 11 games for Bojan Miowski before this afternoon. He scored 11 in the previous 12, but he comes alive on the big stage. And you have to wonder, where would Aberdeen's season be without the Macedonian striker? It doesn't bear thinking, but do you know what? For, uh, for Brendan Rodgers, that's what he's facing. A clinical finisher in Bojan Mojovski. And for Aberdeen, they don't have to care about it because he's in the side, he's got his team 1-0 up. And sent the, the Red Army delirious with uh, joy. I mean, what an absolute wonderful opening to the game for them. I think everybody recognising the, the importance of the game and how difficult it's going to be for Aberdeen. Yeah. You look at it and you say, if they can get the first goal, it's going to help. And they've scored early and give them a belief and confidence to try to settle into this side a little bit. The Celtic will come straight back at them. Yang cutting onto the right foot, teeing that up for Johnson. Now Callum McGregor slotting straight back into that Celtic side. Tomoki Iwata had been doing pretty well in his absence, but once fit, McGregor was always going to come back in. Here's Kuhn, and he gets a touch from Kelly Roos, and knocked over by Yang at the back post. The first sighting of goal for Celtic. Well, my initial reaction, Murray, is why does Roos not catch it? Kuhn 
does well. Doesn't do enough of this for me, attacking the byline, but he does on this occasion, gets him behind. Just thinking, why is the keeper not catching that? It looks easy enough. Yang mistimes the header a little bit and drifts over the crossbar, but um, the interesting thing for me now is this is a change Celtic side from, you know, a few months ago. They have the bit between their teeth again, and you expect now a positive reaction. Now the challenge is go and do it, and are Aberdeen going to be able to handle that reaction? It's a, it really is, I think, for the for the neutral, it's a wonderful opening to the game. Now this was perhaps a Celtic side that maybe back in December looked extremely vulnerable to situations like this. We will see how they will react now because well, oh. it's a heavy challenge by Miofsky on Liam Scales, two former teammates, and the Irishman gets straight back to his feet when I think a few more were maybe looking for a bit more drama there. I like that. That's good. You know, Miofsky clearly was uh, apologetic, it was a mistimed tackle, Liam Scales wasn't making any more of it. And Johnson looking for Kuhn and it comes off the German last, defended well by Jack McKenzie. This is an Aberdeen side that have won twice in Glasgow already this season, once at Hampden Park, against the Bernie and once at Ibrox as well, against Rangers in the league. You know, when you're just looking back at the goal, though, the, the little bit of the concern for Celtic was that that space in front of the, the back line for Clarkson to drop in, they can't allow that to happen because, you see, he's got the quality, the slide drill pass, perfectly weighted for Miofsky in behind Carter Vickers. Well, and I think when we first saw that Aberdeen line-up, we all looked at each other and thought, that is very attacking. Three very... Good creative players behind Mayovsky. Yeah, Peter Levin has certainly looked to take this game to Celtic. Yeah, he has. Throw caution in the wind, and, and Dante Polvara has got really good legs as well. So, as much as he's sitting in midfield, he's somebody that you would expect is going to get forward as well when the, uh, when the game allows it to happen. So, yeah, three attacking players in behind the, the lethal marksman of Mayovsky with. Polvara, the, the energy in the legs that he's got. There's Kuhn for Johnson, who got a couple of assists last weekend against Samirin. That one comes off the Canadian last and out for the goal kick. Miofsky is a goal every other game this season. Appearance number 48, that goal number 24. Fourth in the Scottish Cup this season as well. said even though outnumbered Aberdeen supporters would make their voices heard but even they may not have dreamt of this as a start ahead inside two minutes and they're determined not to have regrets from this trip to Hampden Park when in the League Cup final earlier on this season they really didn't show their best against Rangers still ran them close but never really laid a glove on Philippe Clement's side now Miofsky's on the chase again here behind Carter Vickers was he pulled down Peter Levin turns to fourth official David Dickinson and asks the question it has been cleared by VAR as Matt O'Reilly slides in and concedes the free kick. Well, it'll be interesting to see it again. One thing's for certain, it looked like a lovely first touch from Mayovsky. He looked back at the initial, so the fill that came afterwards, McGrath getting pulled down by O'Reilly. See this here, looked as if he brought it into his path, lovely there. I mean, no, nothing there for me. So, coming together that happens all the time, two players are challenging over the top but what it is Michael is another sign of that threat that Miofsky gives over the top yeah he does I mean look he, I think you touched on it before in big games he's done that on so many occasions and, and Aberdeen I think sometimes they, they overplay it they need to be set you know there's no point in just thumping balls over the top if, if there's not good controlled possession 
but when they have, in big games, been able to set it up right, it's been a, a wonderful tool for them to use, wonderful weapon. And it's just a wee reminder for Celtic as well that they they, uh, they need to be cautious and mindful of of the uh, the attack that Aberdeen possess. There's Kuhn, lovely slip ball in, looking for O'Reilly, just skips off the surface, which is looking absolutely fantastic out there in the Glasgow sunshine this afternoon. Skills and Carter Vickers back together as Celtic's first choice pairing at the heart of that defence. Wouldn't have started that way this season with Mustaf Lagabielka and Mike Navrotsky both coming in on big transfer fees, but Liam Scales has made that position his own. And of course, it seemed to be that it was quite close that he would actually be heading up to the northeast and Pitodri on a full time deal. There's Kyogo to send that across and steered away by the Aberdeen captain, Angus McDonald. Taylor into Tate. Skills under a bit of pressure, but he does get that back to Cameron Carter-Vickers. You can hear the Celtic support a little bit disappointed there with uh, Liam Scales. Kyogo made a lovely arc run getting in behind. He's now trying to play it. And he's done it again, Kyogo. He has pulled off uh, McDonald and then the stinging shot repelled by Kelly Roos. I think Liam Scales is obviously aware of that as well. That The first time there was a great opportunity as well. Loads of space to drop it over the top. Next attack, he does it. And Kyo gets the strike away. He's constantly on the move, the Japanese striker. Never really standing still, allowing defenders to, to mark him and know where he is. Back to Joe Hart. Will be retiring at the end of the season, hoping for the ideal send-off on May the 25th. There is a injury here to Nicholas Kuhn playing at Hamden Park for the first time signed from Rapid Vienna in January but he's surrounded by so many players that know this place so well yeah he just gets caught there you can see his nose is bleeding a bit of a sore one Jack McKenzie going in and heading it, and he's, he's caught Kuhn. Sore one for the, the German. Celtic unbeaten in their last 24 games against Aberdeen. We'll have to go back to May 2018 in the end-of-season game at Celtic Park when they were already champions, when Andy Considine got the winner for the Dons. And the medical staff will just take their time with Nicholas Kuhn, a 20-year-old German. Yeah, I'll take a wee bit of time because there's a fair bit of blood pouring out his nose there, trying to stem the flow and a wee bit of uh, added time to this first half for a stoppage, no doubt. Jack McKenzie just flicking the ball away and eventually caught up. So often the difference maker. It's a lovely pass from Clarkson, it really is. 
picking the ball up in a dangerous area, straight away looking to go and penetrate the opposition. It's 24 goals for him, the most by an Aberdeen player since Adam Rooney in 2014-15. Peter Levin, who actually is in his second caretaker spell this season. He did the one-all draw against Celtic in February after Barry Robson was dismissed. And Nicholas Kuhn will have to come off for further attention should Celtic need to make a change. They do have some quality in reserves. The likes of Lewis Palma and James Forrest could easily go out and do a job on that right wing. Celtic will battle on with 10 for now. It's a long ball to pick out Duke. Miofsky waits in the middle. McGrath at the back post. Clarkson coming in. Duke. And Scales knocks it out. But the flag does go up and delayed offside. see there Leighton Clarkson's getting himself right on top of Cal McGregor just making sure that there isn't space for him to pick that ball up the base of the midfield and get it out the other side and Mijowski also trying to shut off the, the game and, and close half the pitch off Kyogo got half turned Aberdeen snap in Kyogo stays down so Celtic actually playing with nine for now Kyogo hobbling back to his feet did well there, Aberdeen, and they have done well so far in their system and their, their structure. They are unbeaten in the last four games, that's their best run since October. And you have to say, after Barry Robson left and then Neil Warnock departed, tough task for Peter Levin to come in and just try and steady things, and he's done, done more than an impressive job. It was chaotic, it really was. But, um, I think just with finally making the announcement, and obviously Jimmy T. Lean's not coming in until June, but even just the announcement, a little bit of certainty will have helped uh, the players just to calm down a little bit. And Peter Levin, likewise, is, uh, the job that he's done has helped just to take the, the heat out of what was um, certainly... A, Troubling we spell for, for Aberdeen. They're not out of trouble completely in the league, they need to still pick up some results, but this game here today, I mean, look, it's, it's a season defining game, really. Lane Clarkson looks for Duke, who was coming back from an offside position. There was a collision actually between Clarkson and Kyogo. It was all a little bit bizarre. There were, you can see Jim McGrath, I think he got caught with Kyogo's boot. And he's not particularly happy, McGrath. He's just saying that uh, Kyogo he kicked him there. I don't know, but it was a bit of a bizarre free kick. So here's Nicholas Kuhn back on. The run provided by O'Reilly, and it comes off the Danish. Midfielder from Angus McDonald's attempted clearance and out for a goal kick. Incidentally, Jimmy Tillin will be bringing his assistants, Krista Parson and Emir Bajrami, with him from Elfsborg when they have the mid season break in Sweden. But uh, Peter Levin will be retained as an assistant first team coach. That was good defending there from Angus McDonald. And you know, there's a guy, he's captain in the side out in the Scottish Cup semi-final here at Hamden and he's played a bit part this season which very surprising for me I think any time I've watched him 
when he came in last season and certainly even the games that he's played here in, the, in this campaign. He's a, a calming influence on what has been a problem area for, for Aberdeen this season. Oh, McDonald's in trouble here. The captain gives it up to Kyogo. And there it is for Kuhn. And Celtic level things up. They weren't behind for long. Nicholas Kuhn with the simple finish. But Aberdeen, architects of their own downfall there. McDonald caught in possession. Gartman made up for it with a slight tackle on Kyogo. But the ball settled perfectly for Nicholas Kuhn to knock in his third goal for Celtic, two of which have come against Aberdeen. Well, I think you can call that a commentator's curse, Rory. Terrible from Angus MacDonald. You can be calm and composed, but then you can just be lackluster, and that is exactly what's happened there. Caught in possession, really should never have happened, and Kuhn is on hand to get the the rebound and stick it into the back of the net. But a real terrible moment for Angus MacDonald, and it's gifted Celtic a route back into the game, 1-1. One, one. MacDonald this time finds the safety of Kelly Roos, so Aberdeen's very early advantage cancelled out by Kuhn. There was no pressure there. You know, there was, there was plenty of time to take the touch, but just looked as if everything was far too slow from Angus MacDonald. Never got the ball at his feet properly, and then got it caught in possession by Kyogo, who we know, look, he, he moves so quickly, he can jump on top of you at times before you realise, but that was not one of those instances. It was just a poor bit of defending from the Aberdeen captain. And he'll know that himself. He has to put out his mind, though, now, because... Long time to go in this game. He can't afford any more mistakes. McGrath loses out to O'Reilly. It comes back, though, to Conor Barron and then Leighton Clarkson. A couple of calming passes from him. And there is the grab through for me. Omsky this time hard. Smartly off his line to get there ahead of the striker. Oh, so close. Was it not just almost an identical bit of play to the goal? Just inches away from Mayovsky being able to get on the end of it. But Joe Hart very quick to react again as well. Lovely bit of interchange there from Aberdeen in the midfield area. Jimmy McGrath just stepping in off the line and finding that pass in behind the Celtic defence. Natati. Johnson back to Carter Vickers. Real Natati back into his usual spot in the middle of the park for Celtic. It's an imposing trio of McGregor, O'Reilly and Hatati pulling the strings for Celtic. And Carter Vickers to Celtic's goal scorer, Nicholas Kuhn, scored up at Petodri earlier on in his Celtic career. Kyogo can't quite get there, it was Nicky Devlin that steps in. Celtic beginning to take control here. Devlin again steps in, gets in front of Yang. And Duke can't quite protect it, surrounded by green and white jerseys. Devlin with some defensive work to do and does it well. Yeah, he does do it well, doesn't he? Gets his body in front of Yang, protecting the ball, and wins the free kick. goes without saying he'll be hugely disappointed with the goal that they've conceded, but I think approaching the 25-minute mark, overall, he's going to be happy with how Aberdeen have, uh, have started this game. 
Our general setup has been good. Stefan Gartman. Duke was hoping for a free kick. Taylor's given it away to Barron in any case. Duke again. Clarkson's making a run through the middle of that Celtic defence. It is Leighton Clarkson, but only into the gloves of Joe Hart. You know what I like about this performance so far from Aberdeen? They're looking to go and make things happen. They're not hoping for something to go their way. Barron snapping in, winning the ball, Clarkson running forward. Here's Coon, Celtic have numbers forward here, they've flooded the box. But the ball from the winger was behind them all, and here goes Duke. It is an open semi-final. It's good, I mean, look, this is the sort of thing I think people have been expecting from Aberdeen all season. You know, this type of performance. We'll compare this to the League Cup final, even, even to the semi-final against yeah. Hibernian when yeah. you talk about almost waiting, hoping that something might go your way. It did in the semi-final, it certainly didn't in the final. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're engaged in this game. You know, and I'm talking about Barron there. There was a, a turnover over the ball, Brendan Rodgers side pick it up, but they're, they're, they're moving forward. They're not dropping back. They're moving forward to go and engage and try and win it back. They did. They're breaking. They've just got a bit of intent to their game and their performance, and, and it's making for a better spectacle here. The challenge is there for Celtic. Celtic have answered the first question that has been put to them. And it always looked a little awkward between Barron and Matate. Certainly nothing untoward in the challenge, but just the way that both players went down. This is a tough one for Cal McGregor. Obviously, he's not had a lot of minutes. The game's quick, it's, it's frantic. Aberdeen have got good uh, balance in the midfield as well, so he's not got a lot of time to try and settle on the ball and feel his way into the game here. First start since February the 28th for the Celtic captain. He has come on in the last two. And Taylor clattered by Duke, but Hatate keeps it alive for Yang. Hatate. Johnson sidesets McGrath. Kuhn hugging the touch line again. Johnson looping round the outside. And McGregor. Kuhn is looking to clip one in. The movement of Kyogo so enticing. Again, that importance of the high starting position from Joe Hart. I mean, yes, it's a slightly overhit ball from Clarkson, but it wasn't ridiculous. But as soon as he hit it, you were thinking, no chance, because Joe Hart's just in the perfect uh, spot to be able to mop it up and avert any danger. Taylor, Johnson, to McGregor. expected that Celtic will have more of the ball it's difficult for Aberdeen to, to chase but that's what they need to do they need to constantly keep pressure on the ball there's Kuhn looking for O'Reilly Polvara trying to track him and he does win the tussle again a bit of space to progress it's to play the one two it's Mackenzie gets the final touch off his opposite man that becoming quite an intriguing little one-to-one -one battle between Mackenzie and Kuhn it's an intriguing battle at the moment Aberdeen have been able to settle themselves again after the disappointment of uh, 
shooting himself in the foot and being drawn level with uh, with Celtic. And for Celtic, it's just looking for a little bit more when they're getting into those positions in the final third. They've not really been able to penetrate yet in the wide areas. On one or two occasions, it looked like they're about to, but um, you know what they're going to try to do. They just need to try and execute it a little bit better. It's Connor Barron just giving away the free kick as he slid in to challenge Alistair Johnson. He certainly didn't agree with Don Robertson's call on that one. On we go, and here's Yang. Duke having to come back to try and protect Aberdeen's position. He does it very well indeed. Yang stays down. Barron forward looking for Bielski, who just holds off scales with ease. That's great play. That really is good play from Aberdeen there. Well, Bielski was wanting the long diagonal from Barron as well there. Devlin getting forward, but the passes don't quite click for the Dons. And now Celtic look to go at pace up the other end with Johnson. Not the ball that was required for Yang, though. Just over hit there from Alistair Johnson, but you can see they're obviously desperately trying to get in behind the fullbacks. But so far, Aberdeen have defended those areas pretty well. It's a key area for Brendan Rodgers' side for me. You know, when you see Carter Vickers of late coming back in and Hatati coming into the midfield, I still think the wide areas are where this side are, are lacking the, the, the quality. And you, you think of obviously. Jota's has left the club, Abada's gone, Maeda's out injured and he's not really hit the heights of what we've seen before. It's the one area of the team that's just a little bit lacking. It's Carter Vickers has got a race on here, which he won't win. Aberdeen will have the corner on the far side. Again, it's the threat of Miofsky in behind, which just occupies the minds of Carter Vickers and Scales. That's the thing, it's the two centre-halves have been occupied by Mujovski in his movement. You see fully stretched Carter Vickers having to flick it away. Wasn't in any real control, hence why it's, it's gone behind for the corner kick here. It's Leighton Clarkson will take. Swinging delivery is well over the top of Duke, who was the last man at the back post. Celtic quickly back underway and look to find their rhythm again. O'Reilly popped off quickly to McGregor. Kyogo's on the move again. McDonald positioned himself well. Neat touch from Polvara. Now McGrath will look to hold off Callum McGregor. And the free kick will be given as Clarkson knocks that one out of play. But it's more good play in the turnover. Aberdeen looking to really go at Celtic. Nice little bit interchange with a couple of passes. You see Cal McGregor desperately trying to get goal side on Jamie McGrath. That's a wonderful ball for Polvara. Mackenzie, Miofsky waits, it didn't quite come his way. Carter Vickers protecting that front post. And Alistair Johnson has just stayed down as he stretched to try and clear that. Yep. Clearly uncomfortable. For Alistair Johnson, I'm not totally sure what it is that um, was wrong there, but um, just the moment before from Celtic was actually quite good as well. There was a you see Carter Vickers popping it into O'Reilly, Cal McGregor desperately getting forward to get onto the ball as well, just and then forcing that, that last pass, and that to me is just that little bit of ring rustiness that is in the, the performance, because he's not played a lot, McGregor, just trying to force that, that, that last pass. Given away this time by Taylor, Duke can find Clarkson. 
looks for Duke again. Devlin in support if Duke needs him. He doesn't have a lot of space to operate on, and he'll take that coming off Yang for another Aberdeen corner. I mean, you look at the threat that uh, and the the positivity that Duke has has given Aberdeen here today. Then you realise it's like getting a new player because they've really missed the level of performance that Duke had last season. The goals, the assists. The driving runs, but certainly today he's been back defending, he's been forcing the, the issue getting forward as well. And a big positive for the, the team from the northeast. Well, and Aberdeen put all their attacking players in the six yard box to attack that ball from Jack McKenzie. Carter Vickers defending well. And McGrath just gets there ahead of Yang. Bruce, the scales can only knock it down to Polvara. Jump Miofsky. Taylor wins it again, but it's all about where the ball will settle. Gartman sends it forward. Scales and Miofsky will challenge for it. And Scales who came out on top, and now Johnson looks for that direct delivery towards Kyogo. That's the sort of thing that I've seen historically with Aberdeen, just trying to force that ball over the top on occasions to Majowski. And Celtic are doing it there with Kyogo. Well, Kuhn on the left-hand side. Polvara just gave it away, and Taylor, Hatate. And it's Duke that nips in front of McGregor, and now looks to back his pace against Alistair Johnson. And again, but that's excellent from the Canadian right-back. Always looked in control of the situation, never panicked when Duke got into full stride. McGregor again, it opens up here for the Celtic captain as Callum McGregor uh, just rising over the top of Kelly Roos's goal. Yeah, look, a good bit of space on the edge of the box here for Callum McGregor. And the quality he's got, it's no surprise that he's taken the, the shot on there. Just not able to keep it down and test Kelarus. I'm just looking at Alistair Johnson. He's, looks like he's still trying to shake off whatever it was that uh, he was feeling when he tried to make the, the block earlier on. Clarkson to Miofsky. And Taylor was just held back by Aberdeen's number nine. couldn't force it through first time now they try a different approach O'Reilly had to react McGregor Atati Taylor and Yang perhaps with a chance to go one on one against Devlin Greg Taylor, and now Johnson encouraged to shoot, which he does, low, across goal, and just drags it wide of the target. Well, it wasn't the worst attempt, was it? There was definitely the opening there once it got worked back to the edge of the box and slipped across to him there. Just ever so slightly pulling the shot. But you know what? I just think on too many occasions when you see Yang on this side and Kuhn on the other, 
it's that lack of willingness to go and really hit the byline. It becomes almost like basketball and you're working your way around the edge of the box and when there's so many bodies there, it's not always on for the strikes like that there from Johnson where there's that space and what Callum uh, McGregor just had a few minutes ago. You really need them. What we saw earlier on, I mentioned on it, when Kuhn faced up Jack McKenzie, dropped the shoulder, went to the byline and it causes so many problems once you're in behind the defence. And Look, we know that predominantly left-footed, he wants to cut in, likewise with Yang here. Well, Clarkson takes, it comes all the way through to Gartman. Big save from Joe Hart. Rushed off his line, how did that one get all the way through to Stefan Gartman? Good question. <laughs> because it's not a particularly great free kick, I think. Is it Greg Taylor that's, yeah, just flicks it. I don't know how led to him just flicking it and not making the block wonderful goalkeeper from Joe Hart right out on top of Gartman Greg uh, Taylor protesting to Don Robertson as if something had happened, I didn't see it but um, fortunate Clarkson curls one in again towards Gartman Duke hit the deck but there weren't too many appeals the way of Don Robertson so Devlin Send it back towards Polvara. Won the header. Scales sent it away. McDonald. Scales. Commanding header from him. And now Kyogo. Now Kyogo was the only. Or um, Kuhn was the only man ahead of him. And Celtic just looked maybe to go a little early with the killer ball from Kyogo. Well, I think the ball was on earlier, but then. Once he'd waited and taken a couple of touches, Kyogo pass wasn't on that time. I think he needed to try to shift the angle a little bit. Maybe try and come out the other side. Aberdeen had plenty of bodies back in the end. But initially it was a bit of a foot race between Kuhn and the, the last defender if uh, Kyogo decided to slide it. Carter Vickers winning the tussle with Miofsky. Kenzie's going to come under pressure here from Kuhn, who beats him. Kyogo in the middle, and he couldn't quite get the angle to find him. Well, it's the danger here once it's uh, flicked over and the ball's bouncing. Kuhn's on his bike, getting there first, not able to get his right foot around it and put it into the path for Kyogo. Riley presents it to Duke. He's doing well so far to hold off McGregor, but it's only getting harder as he approaches the corner flag and another Celtic player comes in to help out. And it will be a Celtic free kick. Well, it's a free kick in the end that's right down in the corner flag and it's great play from Duke. You know, he's, he's under real pressure straight away from... Celtic captain McGregor, but he shows real good strength. Drives forward, holding players off. Same. Um, been a very good performance from from Duke so far, along with a number of his teammates, and they need to keep that up, Aberdeen, if they've got any hope of getting themselves through to the final, because you would imagine that Celtic are going to. Dominate a little bit more in the second half. There's Polvara to Miomski, who claims handball here against Liam Scales. This, of course, one that will be checked by Greg Aitken and Andrew McWilliam on VAR. It certainly looked like it caught Liam Scales. Is then just a question, really, if it has caught the arm, is it? If it's um, in a completely normal position, which a lot of the times it is, but we'll have a better look of it here. It's a good angle for a replay. I tell you what, Rory, you know, he's holding the player off. That could that could easily have been given. Well, it may really yet, still. I'm just meaning even in real time, you know, the, the referee could easily have given that. 
I would have a little bit of sympathy with Liam Scales because I think his arm is out holding the player off there, but the fact that as he's swinging forward, the ball is then is caught. I, mean, I see a lot of ludicrous decisions that are given with uh, VAR and handball. That, for me, is probably right on the, the borderline. It's right on the borderline of the penalty area as well. So that's that's another thing that they'll need to check as the five minutes have just been confirmed. But that's uh, clearly going to be a little bit longer now. And imagine he's panicking as well, Liam Scales, because he knows that it's, it's caught his arm. And he knows that the world we live in now where there's some strange handballs that are given. That wouldn't be a strange one, but I would have a lot of sympathy with him. I don't think it is. Well, the check has been completed. It was indeed outside of the penalty area, so Aber Aberdeen will restart with this throw. There was a handball, but they wouldn't go back for just a free kick. Well, you can hear the Celtic supporters, they're not best pleased. It's uh, credit to Aberdeen, they have disrupted this Celtic performance. They've not been able to find a real rhythm and a flow to their game. They're going to have to perform better in the second half. In his scales, he may have been a little concerned in the, that what would have felt like a very long wait for that decision. It'll be very interesting to see... Uh, an angle if we get one along that line. Well, certainly from high behind the goal, just to see exactly where the contact took place. It's in from Kuhn. Taylor on the edge, he goes down, but no free kick. Taylor. And scales. Devlin sliding in on Yang. He felt he got enough of the ball, but Stone Robertson felt he went through the player to get it. He did. He did. I mean, he got plenty of the ball, but he is through the uh, the back of Yang. Yang's got his body in front. I'm not really sure Nicky Devlin can be complaining there. It's it's a clear free kick. See the ball's coming up, Yang's got his body in front. I mean, that's a free kick every day of the week. It's probably been like that for about 25 years. I was going to say, I was thinking back to the 94 World Cup when, when that tackle got outlawed. There you go, 30. And we're close enough, Rory, yeah. There's Kyogo with the touch, but laid off to a red jersey. And there's Gartenman. Forward from Devlin and Duke. And keep it in play, knock it off Taylor. And obviously, a lot of supporters expecting the offside flag to have gone up there for Duke, but he's been a wonderful outlet for Aberdeen so far. You see the turnover here when the ball's getting played forward. No, he's clearly onside. You can see Carter Vickers is stepping up in the middle there, played him onside. Good call from the officials there. A strong finish to the first half from Aberdeen. They started well as well. Here's Devlin into Miovsky. Jack McKenzie to take this corner for Aberdeen. Left footed from McKenzie, that's too close to Hart, who claws it away to safety. And Duke, shoulder to shoulder with Hatate, wins that initial confrontation. Then the Japanese gets back in, and it's a victory for him in the end. 
that's a good battle because you know the strength of Hatati. Here's this incident before coming off of Scales' arm. Obviously, outside the box was the call. If it's, over, if it's on the line, it would have been in. But for me, I go back to it. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was given, but I would have had real sympathy for Scales because I think his arm is there holding off um, Mayowski to begin with. A borderline call that uh, being outside the box is, is avoided having to be made. Johnston played the five additional minutes, but of course we did have that delay for VAR, so play going on, and Nicholas Kuhn on the left-hand side, this time finding Taylor. Why is he not hitting the byline before? I, it was bizarre. Kuhn, Miofsky gets in to break up the Celtic attack, and that brings an end to what has been a very intriguing first half. Donald that sprays that out, looking for Duke, who has been productive down the flank for Aberdeen. Miowski to Clarkson now, and McGrath will be closed down by two Celtic players. One of them is Alistair Johnson, and Aberdeen will have an early free kick to look to attack in this second half. Well, it's more positivity for Aberdeen. Ideal start in the second half. A little bit of a loose ball in the midfield, they're on to it, they break forward. It's a free kick. And obviously, the guys talking about it at half time there and they're spot on. It's the big challenge for Aberdeen is to make sure that they maintain this level of performance. A lot of those players out there performing at the highest level and, and winning their 1v1 battles. They've got to keep doing that. And Clarkson looks favourite here too. Whip this one in with the right foot, gets it over, Kyogo scales half clear, McGrath keeps it alive, and then the volley goes well off target. There were a few handball appeals in there, but I think it was against McGrath. Well, it certainly seemed to the Celtic players that were claiming for it, but a dangerous ball there from Clarkson, it just hits off of Duke, actually, without him realising. Yeah, you can see the Celtic players claiming came up off of uh, McGrath. See, that for me is the, the, the problem for Celtic. They've had no penetration in those wide areas with Kuhn and, and Yang. Flipped them over just at the end of the second half there. and for, Sorry, the first half. And even when they had the opportunity to run the line, Kuhn on his stronger left foot, he's still looking to come inside and narrow off the game. Will he do this time? A chance to go up against McKenzie, gets the overlap from Johnson and it wins Celtic a corner. And of course, you want a little bit of variety and on occasions when you're driving in, you've got a overlap and run there from Johnson, then that's a good bit of play. But when it becomes the only bit, it becomes a little bit predictable and one-dimensional. So Matt O'Reilly to take Celtic's corner, Liam Scales went for it. And it goes to the middle from Kuhn. And McGregor will pick up. Do you think that is something that's naturally in the head of the wingers, or do you think that comes from the coaching? I think it's just a lack of quality in those wide areas. You've got quality, you face the defender 1v1 up, go and attack them. Jiang with the delivery in, Kyogo just peeling off, Kuhn coming in at the back post. They're obviously playing inverted on the, the wrong side, but you still want to see them going and hitting the byline at times. They just don't do it enough. I don't think it's just down to coaching. I just think it's a, it's a mentality of some uh, some wide players nowadays. There's O'Reilly from McGregor, and now Kuhn from deep. Chased by McKenzie. Taylor. Kuhn again. Yang against Devlin. 
few step overs, cuts back onto the right foot, and the cross is plucked out of the air by Roos. Even there, there's a bit more intent, there's a wee bit more energy to Yang going and facing Devlin up. He's driving him back into the box before it was very static and slow. I would imagine that Brendan Rodgers has, has passed that message on him. When you ask it, is it, you know, is it coaching? I can't believe it would be because it's not beneficial for to play, you know, one-dimensional like that and only drive on the inside. Could almost getting that touch away from McKenzie after Joe Hart was hurried into his clearance. Brendan Rodgers would not have expected the, the midfield in particular to have, have been second best to a large extent. Matati's been quiet, McGregor's been quiet, O'Reilly likewise. I wonder, you know, he spoke before the game about McGregor not playing the full game. I wonder how long he'll leave it before the likes of Owata makes an appearance. Well, interestingly, Brendan Rodgers did turn to the Japanese substitute just as the second half kicked off. And so give yourself 10, 15 minutes. Tomoki Awata will be introduced at some point. Devlin thought he was blocked off by Taylor, perhaps just ran into him, and that's what Don Robertson tells him to get back to his feet. Duke now covering his position, but that frees up Yang. Yang cuts back. Yang on the right foot. Polvara only half clear. And Kuhn with the effort, and McDonald gets a firm head on it. Now Miofsky goes down, Carter Vickers is adamant that he did nothing wrong there, and still Devlin down on the far side, but his absence almost led to an opening for Celtic. Well, the players are falling down everywhere. So many instances, Carter Vickers is adamant that nothing's happened. But this is a lovely ball there from Hatati on the inside there. Bad we check back from... Yang, good block from Gartman in the end. And likewise, I think it's McDonald that gets the header away here. See this ball, wonderfully weighted. The first touch from Yang wasn't ideal. He wasn't able to keep it in his, his path and he had to check back again. Still not sure what's happened there between Mayowski and Carter Vickers when they, they came across, but on the far side, a little bit of concern for Devlin. Yeah, Nicky Devlin has stayed down. He's been such an important player for Aberdeen this season. He's only missed the one game since arriving from Livingston. This was how it happened. Oh, that, yeah, it's just the landing there. You can see he's left leg, his knee and hip and groin. That's a sore one. His body... His boot was caught in the ground, his body was going in the, the other direction. It just looks as if he's hurt and opened up a lot of the joints down that left leg. You'd like to think and you would hope that he's able to, to get it moving and, and run it off, but it certainly looked like a bit of an awkward one. He's already been in the wars, clearly, he's got the mask, he could get, get a knee brace, what else could he wear out there for protection? Here is Duke Aberdeen operating with ten for now, As Devlin should be able to... Well, I thought, yes, he is going to return, because he will take this throw-in. It's more really good play there from Duke. He takes the ball in tight on the touchline. He's under real pressure from Hitati, who's got great strength. But Duke's holding him off. He's winning his side of throwing. And winning the jump against Taylor there, but Miofsky was offside. Johnson and 
fact, it was a touch, but that will be an offside call against the Canadian. Jack Milner's currently getting some instructions and will be joining us shortly for Aberdeen. You can see here Johnston just offside slightly there. Eventually the linesman flag goes uh, up. And Brendan Rodgers was just having a quick word with James Forrest who's warming up with Tomoki Iwata. So I would not be surprised one little bit if James Forrest is on this pitch. Sharpish because the white players have not really been able to provide anything for Celtic so far. Both managers looking to be proactive to try and turn this very well poised Scottish Cup semi final in their favour. Gartman to Miowski. Again, one of the flick on the clocks. Just unable to get a hold of it. Now Kuhn sliding in, timing that well was Jack McKenzie. I think you can see as well for Rabadine, the fullbacks. They've got a sense that they've got the upper hand. Mackenzie clapping at the tackle, shutting it down. Likewise on the far side with Devlin. Carter Vickers out to Nicholas Kuhn. McGregor feeds Johnston. He's come looking, searching for the ball, but does drop for Taylor. Came under pressure from Polvara. He was up quickly on him there, Polvara. Just a little bit of a heavy touch from Greg Taylor. Managed to evade the tackle and get the ball away in the end, but it was it was tight. Very finely poised game here. Gartman the runner of O'Reilly and Duke loses out to Taylor Hatati helps it back to the left back Celtic winning the ball high up the park Johnson now O'Reilly and Kuhn it's, I mean, really, that's, that's useless it really is you know you're narrowing off the game you then make it all the more difficult to actually be able to play a ball where uh, Kyogo can get on the end of it. He thrives on balls in behind, in behind the defence. And when you're playing like that, where everything is driving on the inside, it just shuts down the angles. Out to Kuhn again. He's been fed plenty of times. Mackenzie again will show him the inside. Now Hitati. Pulvara. Matching him, Taylor, Tate. Celtic have had a lot of possession in this second half. They haven't managed to do too much with it, just as that one was fed into the feet of O'Reilly. That's a major concern for Celtic, it really is, because, you know, when you spin the ball out to a wide player and they've got five, ten yards to go and attack the, the fullback, who you're potentially then moving back into the box, and all you do is slow it down and go on the inside when there's also 10, 15 yards of space towards the byline, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. There's another opportunity. Attack the fullback, hit the byline, no. Slow the game down. Well, he's gone inside, looking for that return ball. And the tate, down goes Kuhn. The ball was out of play. Ball goes out over the line in the end. Tati trying to find that slide rule pass. Turning, Polvara to Clarkson, 
looks back for Polvara, down goes Clarkson and Aberdeen will have the free kick just their side of halfway. Well, they needed that little moment there because they're just thinking the Celtic were attacking the other way. Aberdeen have not really been able to, in the last five, ten minutes, get much uh, play going forward the other way for them. See Kuhn catching Clarkson late there. Just getting a couple of passes, getting an attack, just so that they they don't feel like they're just holding on and and uh, and having to defend wave after wave of attack from Celtic. They've got to continue to offer something going forward as well. Celtic are preparing a double change. The two players that I've mentioned before, James Forrest. And Tomoki Awata will be the two coming on. I understand that it'll be Hyun Jun Yang and Callum McGregor that will head off. So perhaps a final chance here for Yang to make an impact. Yang on the right foot. Kyogo can't get turned, but O'Reilly is there. Now Taylor, intricate from Celtic, Hatate involved. Hitate, oh, somewhere he found space where there was none, and that he got turned, fired it across. Aberdeen survived for now, but it's coming back at them through Taylor. Now McGregor, Johnson, Celtic looking to turn the screw on the hour mark. Kuhn, Johnson across. Aberdeen knock it out, but Celtic have got their tails up. Yeah, and the, the way the game's just starting to go, you can get a sense and a feeling that Aberdeen are just half a yard off it now. They're not able to get themselves up the pitch as frequent as they were. So that will bring an end to Callum McGregor's semi-final. The double change we'll see the introduction of Tomoki Iwata and James Forrest, there's Shinjun Yang also making way, so James Forrest will come on, he is nearing his 500th appearance for the club, this one, number 490 he's won six Scottish Cups, Callum McGregor has plenty to his name as well, replaced by Tomoki Iwata, but uh, an encouraging sign to see McGregor starting again in a Celtic jersey, just looking to get back up to full speed. That's good from Aberdeen as well. I mean, not the, the, the ball forward there, but certainly they're looking to try to continue to play the ball because you can't just thump it up away all the time. You need to spend a little bit of time on the ball, and they've not done enough of that in this last 10 15 minutes. Cameron Carter Vickers is now wearing the captain's armband for Celtic. Now James Forrest. Forrest opens up. Well, that would have been some introduction. Barron with the block, and now Duke. Aberdeen on the break. If Duke can find the right pass here. Carter Vickers, it was really important, he got in front of Miowski there, and he did. Now Iwata. Kyogo was desperate for it there. He's frustrated, it never came his way. Forrest. Forrest is going to have another go here, James Forrest! That is how to introduce yourself in a semi-final! James Forrest has come off the bench with intent and he has delivered once again for his club. Well, that is quite remarkable. He's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. He's had one shot blocked, the second one finds his way into the corner and Celtic lead for the first time. What is Angus McDonald doing pulling his leg away as well? Just as this comes in. What on earth is going on there? This will be a better angle, but I mean, look, there's a real intent from James Forrest. A 
I'm not sure why the defender doesn't try to clear that there. He's maybe concerned about deflecting it, but just clear it. But you, I mean, you touched on it, Rory. James Forrest picks it up the attack before. He goes right at the heart of the defence, gets a shot away, causes real concern in the Aberdeen team. Second one, same thing, busts past the player, gets the space on the edge of the box, gets the strike away. There's a yellow card for Nicholas Kuhn there for pulling back Jack McKenzie. Quality and end product makes such a difference in the wide areas and they've lacked it in the game up until Forrest coming on. He comes on, he makes the difference, he's side up 2-1 in front. Quite right, a yellow card for uh, Nicholas Kuhn there. There's Clarkson and now it's Aberdeen's turn to try and respond. And they need to because in the build-up to that, they're just coming off it slightly. There's Miofsky. Just quite wouldn't settle for him. Pulvara and steered away by Taylor. Chance for Kyogo on the break. Devlin, the last man back for Aberdeen, but being joined by Dante Pulvara, who fouls Kyogo. And Celtic have the free kick. James Forrest, 105th goal for Celtic, his eighth against Aberdeen, which includes the 2019 Scottish Cup semi-final as well. He was actually on the bench way back in the 2011 semi-final too. I'm surprised that he's not made more appearances, especially when they've been struggling in those wide areas. There's O'Reilly's ball in, Gartman gets his head to it, Duke and Matate going for that one, Barron comes in. Duke will be heading off shortly, it'll be Junior Hoylett who will be coming on in his place. Well, he's been, he's been very good for Aberdeen, but you can see that he's tired. It's an interesting point that you make about James Forrest and why he's maybe not played more this season. Brendan Rodgers came out, I think it was only maybe about a month ago, saying that he's the best winger at the club, and yet doesn't get very much game time, certainly not to start. He's only had three starts all season. Yeah, doesn't really make sense, does it, when the manager's making comments like that, but then not getting the, the game time. But... Completely understandable that he came off the bench here today, and even more so when you see what he produces. Here's Taylor, Rio Hatate. Gets the run from Iwata ahead of him. Hitati now finds Iwata. Kuhn. Acres and time to pick out the right pass. He didn't quite manage it. Carter Vickers is getting the better of Miomsky right now. Kuhn. Back with Hitati. He's closed down and wins the free kick. Gartman and Aberdeen frustrated. So Aberdeen's change, Duke goes off with three quarters of the game played. And 33-year-old Canadian international junior Hoylett. Brought in from the Vancouver White Cup, Whitecaps until the end of the season. Tenth appearance for the former Blackburn, QPR, Reading, Cardiff winger. So 
for Adam Eda will be coming on as well. He's certainly had a good impact in his short loan spell from Norwich City. Well, O'Reilly and Hitati over it. That has been blazed miles over by Rio Hitati. So now Celtic to make their change and it will be Kyogo to make way. No goal at Hamden for once for the Japanese striker. And he's now got some healthy competition up front with Adamida coming on, who's got seven goals in 12 appearances, made his debut at Pataudry actually back in February. Well, this was just in the build-up to that Celtic goal. Aberdeen had asked the question of Don Robertson of whether they should have had a free kick for that challenge on Connor Barron. It was actually it was interesting because Greg Aitken, the VAR referee, asked Don Robertson what the Aberdeen players were complaining about so they could go back, have a check. They had a look and clearly, as we've seen there, nothing really to be dealt with. Forest. So Greg Taylor bombing down the outside and Hitati hits it, takes a touch and it's off a Celtic player, so out for the goal kick. I think it was Ida's first touch. <laughs> Clattered off him by Rio Hitati. So the big question that was obviously being posed and asked at half-time is, you know, Aberdeen able to keep up that intensity? It's dropped off, Celtic have got their noses in front, they've now got to try and dig deep and find something from somewhere that's going to get them back into the game, because at this stage they're going out the cup and they've got to try and disrupt Celtic again. They've just been able to find a bit of a rhythm, controlling the ball a lot more. They've not been able to get in their faces as much or as successfully as they had in that first half. So the 45,000 inside the National Stadium. Here's O'Reilly and James Forrest. Well, he's closed down this time by a combination of Devlin and Barron. It looked like he was about to strike that magic wand again. Give Celtic another. Inside the final 20 minutes. Hitati, Ida now. Celtic have had to come from behind. Kuhn with the right foot, it comes off McKenzie and it will be a corner kick. This second half really has been dominated by one team. Yeah, it has its set. Uh, Celtic going from strength to strength. A bit quicker in their play as well now, and I think there's a in part due to the intensity of, uh, of Aberdeen's performances has dropped, they've just not been able to keep things up. So Riley's ball in, and up went Cameron Carter-Vickers. Couldn't get enough purchase on the header. This one where Forrest was just eyeing up second goal. Connor Barron getting back in just to make a vital block because if it's 3 1, I think safe to say you couldn't see a way back for Aberdeen. But as long as it is just the, the one goal, you never know. Here's Ida. Oh, there's Hatati making the break. Coming across is Garten, and that was important for Aberdeen. Well, 
Well, it's a nice little bit of play from Edok, just checks back and flicks it on the inside. Yeah, good defending from Gartman. O'Reilly clips that one again, the target was Carter Vickers. Connor Barron just hurt himself in the process there, but back up to his feet just to protect that area in front of the Aberdeen back four. Celtic looking for the third goal that will surely kill this off. This is Kuhn, Ida. Well, to hang on to it, Adam Eda. Away by McKenzie, can Leofsky look to get involved for Aberdeen? Clarkson and he combining. Final quarter of an hour. Aberdeen can change things around here. As it stands, Celtic will be heading to the Scottish Cup final on May the 25th to face either one of Hart and Lothian or Rangers who face off tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Scales. Now Forrest. Matati. Forrest. Johnson. Kuhn. McKenzie gets the first contact. Had to be careful just not to dangle the foot in. Here's Forrest again. It's very congested. 18 yard line. Kuhn to Johnson. Hoyland doing his defensive duties. Now to Okiawata. Rio Hitati. Now Johnson. He'd have wanted it. Forrest gets it. James Forrest shifts it back onto the right foot. Well, he did well to best fashion the chance, but Kelly Roos. Was never going to be beaten by the shot. Yeah, just when he shifted it back, I think eventually just stuck under his feet a little bit, but still managing to get the strike on target, working the goalkeeper. I mean, look, the, the intensity that James Forrest brought in an attacking sense, when he picks it up, you just you can see he's got a desire to go and beat opponents. And on most occasions he's looking on that inside channel but he does it at such pace he's popping one twos he's creating space instead of drifting and allowing the defense to get themselves set just the quickness and the speed of his play has helped big time for for celtic in that respect well there's an intensity isn't there and, and you can hear it amongst the fans when the ball goes out to forest on the far left hand touchline they rise in anticipation he's direct there's intent, and it has proved to be the decisive moment right now. It's quality. I mean, it's just simple quality as well. And you can understand why Brendan Rodgers came out and said that, you know, no disrespect to the others, but he is the, the best winger that's at the club. And it does pose a question then, why not playing more often? Aberdeen are going to make a double change here as Nicky Devlin or Nicky Devlin rather will have to go off Jack Milne to come on for him so on comes Jack Milne for Nicky Devlin 21 year old and the other change will be 
higher up the park is Esther Sockler. Will come on for Dante Polvara. So going with a front two, or perhaps Sockler will just sit in behind, and that will allow Clarkson to go back into the middle of the pitch. It's an attacking substitution, though. You know, there's approaching 80 minutes and roll of the dice. Mayowski looking as if he's a little bit deeper, but um, it's effectively two up top, they will just dovetail off of each other. Clarkson dropping in deeper in the midfield. Milne back to Gartenman. And that's flicked on by Sockler, and here's Miofsky, he's got Hoyland alongside him. Junior Hoyland to level the semi-final, it's the side netting. Well, his first touch took him wide, and from then he was always battling against it to get it back. Well, there you go, there's the front two working in tandem. You can see wonderful ball from... Wielski, it's that first touch as you spoke about, Rory. The first touch takes him away from goal, closes down the angle, makes it so much more difficult to be able to get the strike on target. Ten minutes to go. Will Aberdeen regret that opportunity? What a chance it was. And here goes Forrest at the other end to the byline. Kuhn and Mackenzie have a bit of a coming together, but will be an Aberdeen throw. OK, the final ball's not what you would want and expect because of the quality of James Forrest, but you just look at the difference when you actually drive the defender into the box. He's been cutting inside, this time he goes to the line. It's the variety of the attack, as you see, this attack from Aberdeen and the huge chance. Can't get his foot wrapped around it as well because he's stretching. Massive opportunity for Aberdeen that they've, uh, they've passed up there. But with 10 minutes to go, gives them a little bit of belief that there is still life in them. It's Clarkson forward, Sockler with the knockdown. Miofsky's just lurking behind Carter Vickers, Barron. Now McGrath, not quite what was required. It will perhaps come for Sockler. He'll settle for the corner on the far side. And Esther Sockler. Has certainly made a difference already, and he's asking for more from those Aberdeen fans as Connor Barron gets back to his feet. Well, he's given them an another body higher up the park. Now, what it does is it means that the middle is going to be a, a little bit more exposed, but for Aberdeen, they really forget about trying to you know, play things through there. They want to get it up to the final third as quickly as possible and, and utilise the two guys they've got up there now. It's a gamble well worth taking. Will be Mackenzie to take the corner. In swinger. And it's one at the front post by Ida. Knocked away and Mackenzie can try again. This time it will be a change of approach with time running out for Aberdeen, but can they find a big opportunity again? It's Hoylet's corner. It's Matate, challenged by Clarkson. Now Barron, the run from Sockler. He's certainly given them an outlet, something different to test that Celtic defence. Clarkson now, Clarkson's ball in, Scales goes for it, McKenzie with a chance to deliver again, and comes off Johnson who looks to save the corner, that ball was out, though it will be an Aberdeen corner as Johnson protests. Well, it's exactly what Peter Lieber would have been hoping for when he made the substitution, just to get a reaction from the side, and Sokla has given them it, and he's almost... Brought a bit of life to the rest of the team here as well. To Hoylet again. This time the in swinger goes near post. And a few appeals for handball. The Aberdeen players asking the question, so they'll be busy spinning back in the 
VAR booth. McGrath. It's clear, but only as far as Clarkson. It's poor from McGrath. He's got good quality. With loads of time to lift his head. Jack Mill, that handball appeal has been cleared by VAR. Now Kuhn looks for Ida, well read though. And here comes Hoyland on the right foot, unleashes the shot, but a rather imposing frame of Carter Vickers gets in the way. Mill out to Clarkson. There's life in Aberdeen yet. Hart challenged by Miofsky, it's Hoyland! And off the line by oh. Carter Vickers, and Hart grabs it on the line. Celtic survive. Well, Joe Hart, I think, is obviously asking the question of Don Robertson, but when it first came in, I think Majofsky just gets up really well and early. I think it's fair call. And then Junior Hoylett. Unbelievable. Once it lands, I mean, he drops his shoulder, gets the space. He's probably thinking, destined for the back of the net. Carter Vickers in the perfect spot. Right spot, right time. Double change for Celtic. Nicholas Kuhn, one of their goal scorers, makes way and replaced by Luis Palma, who has nine goals, 13 assists to his name this season. And also Rio Hatati to make way. And Paulo Bernardo, the Portuguese midfielder, on loan from Benfica, will replace him in the Celtic midfield. Aberdeen also making a change. And Leighton Clarkson is the man making his way to the sidelines. And it's Crystal Palace Loney. Killian Phillips who comes on. of the 90 left goes Forrest to will play on the right hand side with now Palmer's inclusion does come to Forrest and now O'Reilly Palmer his first involvement looking to thread that one through for Taylor and it yields another Celtic corner minutes have just shown how tight the game can be when it's just the one goal in it as much as Celtic have dominated the second half you can see that Aberdeen with the substitution still posing a threat Palma played at the front post only as far as Bernardo now Iwata Forrest Back to Iwata, time and space to deliver the cross, their scales! Oh, big chance for Celtic. That would have put them in the final for sure. Yeah, it was a big chance. You can see the space for Iwata on the edge of the box here, scales getting in. Just wonder whether he's ever so slightly in front of the ball. Looks like he's just trying to cushion it into the corner makes it a little bit more difficult rather than being able to run straight on to the, and, uh, and head it on target there but uh, still a big chance for Scales to put the game to bed Well the early indications from the touchline are that the plan is to add six minutes at the end of the 90 two minutes of normal time left have Aberdeen's big chances pass them by though both falling to Junior Hoylett. There's Johnson. Mackenzie forward for Hoylett. 
manages to hold off Johnson. McGrath, and he's looking for support. It comes from Jack Milne. Back to McGrath, change of the angle. And Johnson guides that one out for another Aberdeen corner. A roar goes up from the 8,000 strong support in red. Well, it's a good finish here from Aberdeen. If they do even end up going out, then I think the supporters will still be proud of the performance the team have put in. Disappointed they're out, but certainly the element of pride in how the team have gone about the performance today. It's Hoylett to take, away by Palma. Barron was a little hesitant then, did manage to claim it. McGrath and Barron just about managed to keep it for Aberdeen, but now given away. Palma looking early, Aberdeen getting enough bodies back, and now three on this left-hand side is Junior Hoylett, Suckler and Miowski in the middle, it's Hoylett towards that back post! Late, late drama, the Park! Esther Suckler, the late hero for the Dolphins! time and Esther Sockler off the bench and from the moment he came on the park Michael he has looked to make a serious difference and he has done exactly that absolutely but it's this desperation from Palma so poor giving the ball away Hoylett loads of space out here and he goes and attacks the fullback and what a ball into the back post for Sockler and he makes no mistake with the finish, and you're right. He's been on the park, and he's had such an influence. He's brought an energy back to the, the Aberdeen team. Great ball. Brilliant header. What a game. 2-2. Two -two. Well, Esther Sockler booked for his celebrations, but I don't think he'll mind that one too much. His biggest moment in red. His third goal. Well, you've got to give Peter Lehman a lot of credit. He was seeking the advice of some other managers, and I'm pretty sure that uh, score early, make an influential sub and score late would have been great advice to, to have been had, and he's followed it to a tee. Just make sure you don't concede late. It's not finished yet, though. Guided in by Taylor. But, you know, in all seriousness, though, He's made the sub, that he's had a massive impact in the game. But he has taken a risk there and it's paid off for them big time. And you've got to give credit to him for that. Here's Palmer. Celtic desperate not to have to see this one go to extra time. Here's O'Reilly. Is there to be another twist? Well, here's Hoyland. He's got only Miowski ahead of him. Bernardo. Now James Forrest. He wants it on his right foot. And the curler at the outside of the boot. Straight into the grasp of Roos. Well, look, he doesn't execute it exactly how he wanted, but it's a good idea. He's looking at McDonald and just trying to use him as a shield and bend it round them into the far corner ends up going too close to Kayla Roos but seeing James Forrest doing that before with outside of the boot just didn't execute the way he would have wanted but a good idea one by Sockler but it's Bernardo and this one will need to be stopped as Killian Phillips is down with a head knock I wasn't sure it was a head knocker, I think it is. Didn't look like he'd collided at all. I thought it was more just the way he landed and winded himself a little bit. Thankfully he's up and he's OK. Well, both sides have had to show their resolve. 
Both coming from behind at different stages. Aberdeen leaving it late. That's out from Jack Mill. Well, it's been a very good performance from Aberdeen today. Yes, they slipped to behind in the second half a little bit, but the response has been good, very good. Celtic corner cleared away by Mill. Palma now comes in early. Gartman did well to steady himself and knock that clear. Carter Vickers, Matt O'Reilly. Now Alistair Johnson with a curling delivery. Coming in at the back post was Luis Palma. It was just out of the reach of Adam Ida. Palma got onto it, but he just couldn't quite find the angle. What a semi-final this has been. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Absolutely great game. And this ball gets whipped in from Johnson. I just thought for a split second that Ida was going to get on the end of it. And I wonder whether he just gets in the way, puts off Palma a little bit. Or perhaps it's the boot from Jack Milne that scares the winger slightly. Either way, it was just enough to be able to put the Celtic attackers off and make sure that they weren't getting the strike on target. There's Hoyland on. Miofsky for Sockler on Hoyland. Phillips keeps it alive for Miofsky. Pull back for Barron. Well, this would be some smash and grab from Aberdeen if they could get another. Ida. It's Bernardo. Johnson just smashes that clear. Well, they've rocked Celtic with the way they've came into this game in the last 15 minutes. And they look really threatening. Scales gets that on to Taylor. He did well. He was under pressure. Aberdeen have committed a number of players forward the final seconds of the 90 here's Iwata Tomoki Iwata Ida, back to Iwata Ida wow heart and mouth moment and Adam Ida cannot believe it what a goal that would have been really that would have been an absolute cracker Jack McKenzie's down hope yeah, hopefully he does look OK, but what a goal. It's that touch, though, from Ida. It's just too far away from him to get the clean strike away before Jack McKenzie comes in. Just here, too far, he's stretching. What a, what a game, and what a finish. And that would have just topped it off even more. Well, Aberdeen board Jack McKenzie with a heroic moment there. One pinballing about in the middle. And there will be a goal kick for now. There is just a brief check going on. You can see Adamida appealing. And there is the full time whistle for the end of the 90 minutes. Esther Sockler off the bench to equalise in the 90th minute after it looked like James Forrest had won it for Celtic. It has been a classic Scottish Cup semi-final and the good news is there's 30 minutes at least still to come. The score at the end of the 90, Aberdeen 2, Celtic 2, an extra time to come. There's going to be a lot of tired bodies out there. Both sides put a lot into this. For Aberdeen, that goal to get level is just huge because you can see it's just flooded the team full of a much-needed adrenaline. They're going to need this for the, the extra time as well. Well, if you want me to balance it up with an Aberdeen <laughs> stat, only one of theirs has gone to extra time, and that was 100 years ago. 1923-24 against Hibs, 0-0, and then lost on a replay. Well, you can see Gartman was uh, ushering that out for a by kick. I did think it was a 
a corner certainly from here you can see Bernardo thought likewise but Don Robertson pointing straight away for the bye kick and you've got to think Jimmy Tilly watching this performance will be thinking the basis is there for him to build from well and certainly that there's a squad of players that is strong certainly not yep. ninth in the Scottish Premiership no not at all but look that I think I said this before the game anybody that's watched and seen Aberdeen this season recognises the qualities there but question marks have obviously got to be hanging over the team because this is not a performance that they have produced too often this season it's a one-off game in the cup semi-final so not sure too many of the Red Army will care a, a jot now they're in it live in the moment and they have a chance of getting through to their final, they've just got to hope their team can continue for another 30 minutes. Could yet be a memorable season for Aberdeen if they could break this long weighted duck for Scottish Cup glory for Celtic. They're looking for a magical five weeks here. Brendan Rogers hoping to complete a double. The, they've started to take control in the battle for the league title but it does remain close well it does remain tight and close and to, to lose a semi-final would be a, a real tough one to deal with as well in the context of the uh, of the league you know, the disappointment and the, the blow to the confidence as well so this is a massive 30 minutes coming up here it really is been a sensational game though a joy to watch but, uh, in, in large part two teams have, have really played their part here scales ahead or down but it's seized upon by McGrath McGrath looking to put that through for Suckler oh and wide it goes Joe Hart came out Suckler puts it wide oh what a moment McGrath's on it in a flash of... Sockler is... He looks onside there to me, but it just looked like the ball checked ever so slightly and slowed up. Ends up being behind him. And he's not able to get the clean strike away. You see Majofsky's looking for the pass. Strike partner's never going to do that in that position. Well read by Killian Phillips and on from McGrath to Miofsky. Palmer did well initially, but Milne will step in. Phillips has brought some physicality to that Aberdeen midfield. Now Johnson, Ida doesn't stick for him. That's, that's tiredness, that's all that is. Johnson's got the quality, just overhits the pass, too heavy. Brandon Rogers with his perfect record in the Scottish Cup. 15 wins from 15 games. That is under real threat here. He's only conceded six goals in the competition before this afternoon. Here's Forrest. Well, Angus McDonald was able to cut out that ball, Forrest didn't quite get the purchase on the pass through to Ida that he was looking for. And Hoylett who provided that delightful cross for Esther Sockler's equaliser. Well, they keep passing the ball to Conor Barham, but he's wanting to... He's struggling with his right hamstring. Sockler and Miofsky provide that dual target up front, good touch from McGrath, Phillips bustling his way through but couldn't pick the pass to release Hoylett and Johnson was fouled by Junior Hoylett 
Well, he eventually does hook his foot round and win the ball, but I think Don Robertson's obviously pulling up for it. the initial bit of contact. Well, Connor Barron is going to have to receive attention here. Well, come the medical staff. Barron's down, Miofsky too. Let's just get in some help for a bit of cramp. Well, they've had to do a lot of work off the ball, closing down, getting in the faces of uh, the Celtic players. It's not easy, energy sapping. They've, uh, they've executed these, their manager's instructions perfectly, they really have. So hence why they are right in this cup tight. for the other players to have a bit of a breather. Played at quite the intensity. Aberdeen don't quite have the luxury that Celtic would to lose a couple of players as well. Particularly in the form of Baron and Miofsky. Stop and usher to go on. And I said it uh, when they were 2 1 down, approaching full time, that the Aberdeen supporters could be pride, you know, proud of their team, the way they performed. And you know, whoever loses the game, if Aberdeen weren't able to get into the final, there's a way of losing, and Aberdeen have performed admirably here today but obviously desperately hoping they can still get into that final but the performance has been very good and one that the Red Army can, can look at with some positivity and hope towards Jimmy Teeling's tenure well if Aberdeen are to do it they're going to do it without top scorer Bojan Miofsky Shaden Morris will be coming on for him just once Aberdeen can get this out of play, or Celtic maybe look to take advantage of the extra man for now. Well, they need to stretch the game, fully use the width. Luis Palmer's stepping on the inside when Greg Taylor picks the ball up. As Forrest digs the cross out, Mill clears well. Just keep feeding the wide man. There's O'Reilly, oh, great ball in from O'Reilly. Just above Ida and Gartman steers it out for the corner. Aberdeen can now get Morris on to help out with this defensive position. Luis Palma with the Celtic corner again, Milne knocks it clear. Paolo Bernardo. And Iwata for Johnson. Iwata again. Forrest. Bernardo looks to scoop that one back to James Forrest. Well, it's inventive. Yeah, it certainly was. A red wall in front of Bernardo there. Decided to go over the top for James Forrest. So we played ten minutes of extra time. Baron to Sockler. It's not quite as intimidating without Miofsky to join Sockler as that approach. They were really occupying both Carter Vickers and Liam Scales. Always gave Aberdeen an outball. Yeah, they were causing them problems. It's Forrest into Paolo Bernardo. Killian Phillips. 
get that one clear. Barron's down again. And this is an ongoing problem for Aberdeen. Matt O'Reilly. That's too close to Kelly Roos. Yeah, you can see uh, Conor Barron really struggling to, uh, to get through these last few minutes of the first period in extra time. One last big push for Aberdeen. It's what they need. They need to really dig deep. Phillips and McGrath challenging for that, but it comes to Celtic and Forrest and Ida combine. Ida taking it for a run, but McKenzie watched him well, but took a chance. Ida with the quick throw. Johnson, Iwata, it's Forrest that takes over, though. Tomoki Iwata with time and space to cross. Milne, clear. Taylor keeps it alive for Palma. So that's good play from Milne as well. He's getting right on top of Palma, forcing him back. Not letting him turn and attack him. Two and a half minutes left of the first period of extra time. James Forrest thought about the early ball in, takes his time then, does deliver, Gartenman away, Iwata picks up on the edge. Now Carter Vickers, the Celtic skipper. Forrest threads that one through, looking for O'Reilly, out it goes from Barron, who's put everything into this, it was another stretch from the Aberdeen midfielder. Yeah, vital as well, when you consider he is really struggling physically, mentally, still concentrating to get in position there. Deep cross, and it will be an Aberdeen free kick. I guess when both Miofsky and Barron were down, the assessment from the medical team was, well, who was worse? Who was actually able to continue and who was not? They only had one change available. Or, in fact, there is space for one more a mistake. And Ryan Duncan looks like he will be the man to come on to replace Connor Barron. Five substitutes plus the one for extra time. I've done a miscalculation, not for the first time. There is Barron, helps it up to Hoylett. Side. Taylor's clip delivery is plucked out of the sky by Roos. You can see the frustration of Adam Eder. He was in position. Greg Taylor on that inside channel when the ball comes back to him here. The strikers almost drifting around the back, just not enough on it. Either a little bit extra height or a wee bit more pace, and maybe the centre forward have been able to get a header on it. Two additional minutes to be played here. Scales driving forward. Now Carter Vickers. Forrest wants it and gets it. And quickly on to Johnson. Oh, and it's pulled back! Decisive moment that kills off Aberdeen 
Rangers' hopes. Is that the moment that puts Celtic into the Scottish Cup final? Matt O'Reilly comes up and delivers when Celtic needed it most. Well, that's a real quality ball from Celtic from start to finish. You can see James Forrest, he's got his boots on the touchline. Look at that run on the inside from Johnston. Wonderful pick out and a sensational finish there from Matt O'Reilly. And really, when the game is so deep into extra time, your body's tired. Moments like that can go awry, but he makes no mistake. Finds the top corner. Kelly Roos has no chance. It's a great first touch as well from Matt O'Reilly. And I tell you, Brendan Rodgers was punching the air as well. Delighted the Celtic manager. Relieved as well to see his side take the lead in extra time here. The quality down that right-hand side. Forrest, Johnson, and then Matt O'Reilly with a really good composed finish. I just wonder, is there anything left in the Aberdeen tank? What an important player Matt O'Reilly has become for this Celtic side. That's 14 goals and 16 assists. 30 goal involvements for the Danish international this season for Matt O'Reilly. And maybe none of them will be more important than that because it is half-time and extra time, and Celtic have got themselves in front again. Aberdeen 2, Celtic 3. But Aberdeen have to pick themselves up off the canvas again. They looked down and out until Esther Sockler scored in the final minute of the 90. Do they have it in them again? Yeah, you just wonder whether this classic game has got anything else to deliver. But um, we said it in uh, the 90 minutes when Celtic were on top in that second half that as long as the game is just the one goal of a deficit, anything can happen. Long throw in here, set piece, defensive error. It's Gartman to take the long throw. Bernardo sends it clear. Now Mill will drift all the way through and Joe Hart will happily take his time and you know for Celtic the moments like that they are serial winners they but you need leaders to step up you need your top players to come into their own and Matt O'Reilly has come up with a huge moment for his side to put Celtic ahead and now it's all about seeing out this Final period of extra time. Hoylet for Morris. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no doubt that Matt O'Reilly's come up with a big moment, but it's a great goal. It's, it's, the movement. Alistair Johnson's starting position is up high on that inside channel, and, and James Forrest is really wide. Carter Vickers slides it into him, and all of a sudden they're off and running. A good team goal finished off exceptionally from from Matt O'Reilly. Here he is again, feeding Forrest, the two men that have had the biggest impact on this final for Celtic. It's Forrest, and it's another corner kick as he drives to the byline and knocks it off McKenzie. Just the variety of James Forrest's attack. You know, he's, he's driven on the inside, played one-twos to get in behind the defence. That occasion, he's just facing the defender up, going right at him and trying to hit the byline. Not sure whether he's rocked an ankle or whether he's feeling a, a muscle there, but a wee bit of a concern because he's an influential player. It's in from O'Reilly, Kelly Rooston. Look ready for that. He's busy organising the defence. It's Bernardo. Palma. Scales, fine pass for Taylor. And he knocks it. Hoylet for the corner, or of Morris rather. A 
for Luis Palma. Bernardo. Iwata. Palma. Palma in with the right foot. Roos. Looks long. Peter Levin encouraging the Aberdeen players forward to squeeze this game up, make life difficult for Celtic. I mean, look, he, he's not got it where really, he was wanting it to go, but it's the right idea again. They've got to keep trying to play like that. He does it behind here to finish it. Angus McDonald with the challenge. Out it goes and corner kick is awarded. It will be looked at by VAR. It's a great challenge from McDonald. He's hurt himself in the process, but a wonderful ball. He's wrong side. He's manages to get round it. That's a great tackle. It really is from an Aberdeen captain. Perfectly timed. Forrest for O'Reilly now. Bernardo turns away from Hoylett. And scales. Bypasses Morris. Taylor for Palma. Palma no way round Mill helps it on though to Taylor and he does it! But the flag goes up. Adam Ida is certainly not sure about that call. It will be looked at. It was a good finish for me that's for sure. Palma just gets wrapped up, caught, slips it for Taylor. Yeah, he is offside. I do love the striker's optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Certainty. <laughs> Good finish from Eda. It doesn't count. Just ahead of the ball. Aberdeen still in it. Donald, heavy touch, but he gets away with it. Hoyland, Aberdeen have committed numbers forward here. Can Hoyland pick out another killer ball? And does find Morris. Now Milne. Oh, some tired legs out there. But Aberdeen need to find one opening. Morris has done well, gets the byline. Attack by Hoyland comes to. McKenzie gets it on the right, scales with the block, oh. in goes Hoyland, down he goes, Aberdeen! Well, no, it is a free kick to Celtic initially, oh. Don Robertson Luke to point to the spot there, but... Carter Vickers is on his knees, he thinks he's given the penalty away, must have been a free kick before, I'm not sure where, but Carter Vickers is going to clear it, that's a penalty kick all day long, and Carter Vickers knows he's on his knees, desperate. What on earth has it been given for? It's a penalty kick. Well, this is a huge VAR moment. I, I don't. I just don't understand what Don Robertson's given. Before I don't see what's. So, is it Alistair Johnson that's on the ground? Is it? Because this is what's been given for Alistair Jones is on the ground, and clearly Don Robertson's given a free kick for that, but I just don't know what it was. Because there is no debate about the, the challenge from Carter Vickers on Junior Hoylett. The Celtic captain knew that he had committed the foul, but there must have been something beforehand. Well, the check is complete. The roar goes up from the Celtic end, I say end, it is about 80% of the stadium. Well, we've not seen any replays to show the incident beforehand. The officials are adamant that the free kicks beforehand. That? No way. 
That's what it's been given for. The challenge, that, I'm sorry, that, that's what they've given it for. The challenge from Junior Hoylett on Alistair Johnson there. I think that is, un I've got to say, Rory, I think that is really harsh. Hoylett comes in at the back foot. That's not a free kick. That's unbelievable. That really is. Aberdeen will be quite rightly raging at that decision, I've got to say. It's very interesting. I don't think that's one that Don Robertson gave immediately in no, real he time. He waited until the collision came between Carter Vickers and Hoylett. And also, there's nobody from the Celtic team that's claiming for a free kick there. I, I, that's an astonishing decision, it really is. Well, I suspect. In fact, I don't suspect. I know that is not the last we've heard of that. There's Sockler! Oh, oh it's inches wide! What a game. This is absolutely incredible stuff at Hamden. Well, it's given encouragement from the Aberdeen f fans, there's no doubt about that. But how many more opportunities will they get? You know, we talk about the... the the officials in VAR. The referee's given the free kick in the first instance, which I just think is a poor decision, and VAR haven't changed it. I, I just think poor from the officials. It's a penalty kick Aberdeen have, have missed out on late in extra time here. And everything they've given to the game, I think the officials have let them down on that one. to the final five minutes of what has been an incredible Scottish Cup semi-final. Morris is picked up by Palma. Milne dealt with him well initially. Palma, though, now threads it through. It's O'Reilly again. Ida! And he misses his big chance. Celtic go quickly, Forrest, James Forrest, it's O'Reilly again. Well, the game is so open. There are surely going to be chances in the final four minutes here. Palma, what a touch to get away from Mill. Now Taylor and O'Reilly. And the flag is up. You know, I'm just thinking back to the incident as well. Why does Don Robertson not just blow his whistle on the foul that he's, he's eventually given? Why let the game continue? It's not an offside. It's not as if a, OK, let's see how the, the game, I'm playing advantage here. He's given a free kick to the defending team. I don't understand why he's allowed the game to play on if he felt that that was a free kick. Here goes Paolo Bernardo. Celtic with players racing forward here. Bernardo picks out Ida. Gartenman gets back. It will be another Celtic corner kick. End to end. Given everything, all the players here. Given everything to the cause for their sides. Well, I don't think James Forrest is going to see out the full period of extra time, Mike Navrotsky is going to come on for Celtic as they just look to see this one out, to guide themselves to yet another Scottish Cup final. Well, if he doesn't, it's a, it's a huge concern because he's had a great impact for Celtic and you can see him coming off, that's a, such a disappointment and perhaps it just highlights you know, and answers the question as to why is he not had more of a, an impact in terms of game time. Has he had the, the main influence out of it? Obviously there was the goal that he scored, but the way that he's changed Celtic's approach to their attacking play. And just good, simple wing play. A 
attack the byline, cut inside, mix it up, do it at pace, and have an end product. It's it just to me, it's highlighted where Celtic really need to strengthen. They're poor in the wide areas at the moment. No injury to James Forrest, just a tactical change to okay. get an extra centre back on the park to try and defend situations like this that Junior Hoyland is going to try and provide for those in red in the middle. It's a great ball in! And Aberdeen have done it again! <laughs> Once again, a Hoyland cross! And Angus McDonald, the skipper, rises at the back post! In all the years, 150 years of Scottish Cup history, this is going to go down as one of the all-time greats. Aberdeen 3, Celtic 3, and twice with just seconds to go in the game, Aberdeen have pulled themselves from the canvas to level it. This one surely now, the only way to separate them surely will be penalties. An absolute classic from start to finish, Rory. Quite incredible. Brendan Rodgers makes the change to get an extra centre half on. You can see them there. The three of them in the middle. And he's on site, no question. He's round the back of scales. Bang, back of the net. Hoylet, what a ball. Again, to that back post. Quite incredible afternoon here. And it looks like there's going to be more drama as a penalty shootout looms. Sensational game. Well, Junior Hoylet passed up two great chances, but he has created two goals with a couple of unbelievable crosses. Angus McDonald was yellow carded for his celebrations. We're now he'll into that. he'll take that. The Especially first. after the mistake that he made, you know, to give the Celtic the opening to get level 1 1. He is now resurrected Aberdeen's season with that equaliser and potentially taking it to penalties. So I think a yellow card is, is, is a good trade off. Well, it really has been a stunning contest. And you have to credit both clubs, both sets of players for what they have put into it. The dedication, the determination. The substitutions have made a big difference for both sides. You're talking about Forrest, obviously, they came on. Hoylet, Sokla, you know, the, these guys that have come on for, for Aberdeen have had a massive impact in the game as well. Well, that will be an Aberdeen free kick, perhaps. They don't want to let this go to penalty kicks, because one thing you wonder with the substitutions that Aberdeen have made, how many of their regular penalty takers would still be on the park? One there in Jamie McGrath, for sure. Apart from that, you would have thought, you know, certainly the likes of Povara, Miovsky, Barron would have probably all taken spot kicks. Clarkson as well, but it's McGrath. Aberdeen are not finished yet. It drops for Morris, but the whistle is blown. And you know, I said it before, the impact that this can potentially have on, on Celtic if they're not to see this through, the psychological scars that this could cause. Here's O'Reilly. Now Ida. He had the ball in the net to make it 4-2 at the time. He looks to the back post, that's way beyond Luis Palma. You know, it's quite incredible. Nowrowski brought on to try and shore things up for the last few minutes, and, and the first ball that comes into the box after that, you know, it wasn't his fault, but you're just thinking, you can understand what Brendan Rodgers was trying to do, and the next ball that comes into the box... To Peter Levin's men have been able to get and drag themselves level and, and force the game to what looks like a penalty shootout. Carter Vickers wins that above Sockler, in goes Killian Phillips, Ryan Duncan in there, that is Jamie McGrath with a pretty wild 
challenge on Tomoki Iwata there. It is a yellow card for yeah. McGrath. Yeah, I mean, look, I can understand that from Don Robertson, absolutely. But they took a quick free kick there, and Adam Ida was, was spinning down the channel, and he was in. Dives in on Iwata, it's a free kick, it's a yellow card, absolutely. Here's Iwata. Good tackle. Sokler gets the touch. There is the full-time whistle. Well, these two have been so brilliantly matched. The only way to separate them is going to be by penalty kicks. Thanks to Angus McDonald in the 120th minute, equalising for Aberdeen. And penalties are next. So Adam Eda. Scored twice from the spot against Hibbs, but he did miss at Tynecastle. Ida to get us started against Kelly Roos. And Adam Ida <laughs> is successful with his first spot kick. It's in the back of there, that's what matters. The goalkeeper goes one way and sticks it. In the opposite direction, it's not right in the corner at all, but it doesn't matter, it's the back of the net. Gets Celtic off and running. He's been a good addition for Celtic, Adam Eder. A good uh, alternative option up top. And Jamie McGrath, somebody who has taken a good number of free kick, uh, sorry, <laughs> penalty kicks in his career. He certainly has, Jamie McGrath. But with the noise of the Celtic fans, ringing in his ears, he blocks that one out, does exactly what Ida does, and sends Hart the wrong way, calm and composed from McGrath. Yeah, this is a really composed penalty kick, he just shuts his foot off in the end and wraps it into the, the opposite corner. Lewis Palmer has missed two of his last four penalty kicks, incidentally this is the fifth Scottish Cup semi-final that has gone all the way. It's Palmer, Celtic's second taker. Six rows down, and it's 100% so far. Well, sometimes when he steps up, it looks like a bit of a stuttering uh, approach, but he's a very, very cool finish there. Opening his foot up and just sliding it into that other corner, looking and waiting to see if the goalkeeper moves anyway. That's the skipper for Aberdeen that got us to this stage. It goes underneath Joe Hart. And Angus McDonald's. That would have been hard in the mouth for him. It was almost hard on the ball. Underneath. And you know what? You've got to give Angus McDonald a lot of credit there. His game has been up and down with big moments. You don't think he would have been a natural penalty kick taker, but because what you're talking about was Sony being off. He's the skipper, he's stepped up, and he's found the back of the net, so credit to him. Matt O'Reilly scored an extra time. That look to put Celtic into the final at that stage. O'Reilly sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. It's three from three for Celtic. Esther Sockler next up for Aberdeen. Well, it's been a lot of good penalty kicks so far, isn't it? Guys that are psyching out the goalkeepers and sending them the wrong way. That was another one. Very, very good finish under huge pressure for these players. Well, Sockler, who scored in the 90th minute to take it to extra time. Sockler scores down the middle from the Slovenian, and it's all tied up. Three all after extra time, three all in penalties, and Paolo Bernardo is next. Yep, straight down the middle, just gambling that the goalkeeper is there. Uh, is going to move. So Paolo Bernardo. 
have been the Benfica Loney. Paulo Bernardo, oh, he squeezes it past Kelly Roos, who got a hand to it. Oh, was that Aberdeen's chance? Well, that falls into the uh, Angus McDonald category. It's in the back of the net, but the goalkeeper is ever so close. You can see the anguish on his face there. He may, he may be injured, he hasn't got up, Kelly Roos. He's got cramp now as well. Oh, well, I mean, we thought the drama would have just been about the striking and the saves and the penalty kicks, but now Aberdeen have a real problem with their goalkeeper. Needs a wee stretch. One, if he's just thinking that there wasn't enough drama for Everin to deal with. Yeah, I mean, can't recall something like this ever happening in a penalty shootout. It's just been the most incredible afternoon. And the goalkeeper union coming together as well in the most dramatic of occasions. Well, and what it means is that Ryan Duncan is going to have. A long, long wait for all of this to sink in. Well, Kelly Roos, thankfully, is up. And now Ryan Duncan, he'd started just to go back to the centre circle, just to compose himself, retake this walk, but it's been a long, long wait, and Joe Hart might just try to grind the nerves. Pressure on the shoulders of Ryan Duncan. Far from ideal. Well, Joe Hart relishing this moment. Duncan! Oh, has he got in? Did Joe Hart get a touch onto the post? The weight was too much for Ryan Duncan. And it's Aberdeen who blink first. Agonising for young Duncan. And it was far from ideal, his goalkeeper struggling. Meant that he had such a long wait inside of the post, and then for a split second he's hoping and wondering, is it going to be able to end up in the back of the net? It didn't. Well, I was wondering why Celtic weren't sending up the player from the halfway line. It's going to be up to Joe Hart to put Celtic into the Scottish Cup final. He'll be retiring at the end of the season. It was his 37th birthday yesterday. Joe Hart! Oh, no, he's hit the post! This is quite unbelievable at Hampden Park. Celtic were on the brink of the final. Aberdeen just cannot be put to bed. Well, I've got to say... I really do wonder about some of the Celtic guys, the outfield players that have allowed Joe Hart to step up and take the fifth penalty. Angus McDonald was not a, what you would class as a, a certain penalty kick taker, he stepped up, he took it. Joe Hart, you wouldn't have said he's somebody that is a culture player with the ball at his feet either. Well, Junior Hoylett must score to take this to sudden death. Hoylett tucks it into the corner, two assists, plus he nets his penalty. And we are all square again. It just, I mean, the, how is it ever going to end? It's just an unbelievable game. Good penalty kick from Hoylett there. It just continues to produce moments of drama. Alistair Johnson. The Canadian tucks that one away. How calm was that in such a pressured environment? Yep. Right into the bottom corner. The tension is 
unbearable for <laughs> so many in here, but for the players, they've got to deal with it. Well, it's Jack Milne on just his 14th Aberdeen appearance. Milne, no, oh, it's another one that squeezes under the body of Joe Hart. <laughs> Peter Levin doesn't know whether uh, laugh or cry. I guess he's right, it's under him. Well, he can laugh at the moment because we're still very much in it. Tomoki Iwata for Celtic. It's Iwata. That's a fine penalty. A really good penalty kick. Really good. I mean, you see penalty kicks like that getting taken, you say, why are you not stepping up in the first five? Really good. Good composure as well. And now up to Killian Phillips, on loan from Crystal Palace, spent the first half of the season at Wickham Wanderers. The Republic of Ireland, under-21 international. Phillips is saved by Hart! Celtic are in to another Scottish Cup final. Joe Hart may have missed his spot kick, but he has come up with a big save that sends Celtic in to their 61st Scottish Cup final. And eventually, at last, it brings an end to what has been one of the great spectacles in the history of this competition. A classic semi-final that saw two late equalisers for the Peter Levens Aberdeen. The two managers cannot believe the day that they've had. The emotions that the players, that the supporters have gone through, how deep they have all had to go to put on that show. And in the end, after a three-all draw, after 120 minutes of action, it is Celtic who win it, 6-5 on penalties. What an afternoon of Scottish Cup drive.